Right, here we are, back with new Duracell batteries from the cheap shop, so I don't know if they're going to last a long time, but we'll give it a go. Right, yes, yeah, spare wheel, rear mounted, like that. And the brackets will facilitate lights, number plate holder, etc. across the back. Uh, just a quick look down at the petrol tank. Being a good quality car, of course. One has two petrol outlets. R and M, main and reserve. So, late at night when you get stuck, you can flick over to reserve and you've got an extra half a gallon to go about 300 yards. Springs are all back in, etc. Everything connected up. Something's not finalised. There's still split pins, etc. to go in. What I've done, because there's no weight on the springs at the moment, is I have put in a threaded stud bar there, and I've actually pulled the car down onto the suspension to simulate the car being under load with petrol, people, etc. I can just crank those up and down to adjust things accordingly. Right, keeping the Daimler steering wheel, gears, etc. Of course, it was manual, but I'm making that suit the automatic. And you may notice on the steering wheel, we have two horn buttons, one for town, one for country, quiet and louder. I'm going to make my own dashboard and I'm having to use the instruments from the Jaguar of course so they all match up and they look better and are more accurate than the old Daimler ones which have been sold and are going to America. Right, what else can I tell you? I had to remount the steering column because of course I'm sitting further back so I had to make all of this lot up but it fits in a treat. The only thing I'm going to have to do is extend the rod that goes from the drop arm here forwards to the wheels. No no problem, it's got to be extended about 13 inches and then that will all work again. Handbrake's going in the same position as it was, hold on. That's where it fastens on, so that's inside the cab. Right, what's happening around here? Well, lots of carburetors being a Jaguar, they're all rebuilt and running hunky-dory, so that's okay. Um, had to do a bit of a modification to the bottom and top pipes because the uh, outlets are a bit closer now so we have to go at uh, tighter angles or tighter radius. Uh, front suspension I think is alright as it stands because the weight on the front of the car is much the same as it was. Headlights etc, new headlights are being picked up this week and we have new spotlights and we have new horns and bits and pieces so in the next week or two they'll all be fitted and tried out etc. Well, I think that's about it. Next time you see the car, oh no, hold on, just remember two things. One, of course, this bonnet being as long as it now is. I had to buy this super duper, very expensive stainless steel center hinge for the bonnet, which, uh, hold on, goes approximately there, of course because we've got a gullwing bonnet in the old-fashioned way of things. And I did tell you a couple of videos ago about the Hono Drive. Well, that's been, been brought back from America and it's sitting over here. Hold on, let's just go and have a look. There she is, Hono Drive. One has input at this end and depending on whether you move this lever and engage the Hono Drive or not, you either have a 1 to 1 ratio or you have a 1.35, possibly 1.4. Different people say different things. I think it's 135, which will cut your revs down by 35%. Oh, yes. Here's another thing. The heater, I've cut it down. I've taken this much off and I've bought a second one. Because, because, one of the problems with old cars like this is even on a modestly warm day at 40 miles an hour you can be very cold and you need 15 jumpers to keep warm. So, there is enough space that I've decided I'm putting two heaters in, separately controlled so the driver can cook and the passenger can freeze or vice versa. And they're going to sit approximately here. 
and there's enough space that the other one will be a mirror image on the other side. Here they have flaps that you can control how much air goes in, etc. The ram air effect. And they will probably be fed from the side here, a scoop on either side, to ram the air in to give the fan a little bit more assistance. Oh yes, there's another thing I've got to tell you about. Roll cage, roll cage. Having thought about it, high centre of gravity, busy roads, etc. I have decided that although it's not, not an original fitment, a roll cage is going in. It's going to be fastened down here to these very large bolts that go through the chassis. It's then going to come up behind the seats, over and down. This bar is only te temporary, that's coming out when the roll system goes in. There'll be hoops at the top here where the roll cage goes through, so that'll beef up the body and vice versa. And if anything goes wrong in an accident, hopefully it'll all work together to protect the driver and passenger. Well, I think that's it for now. I've got to get my jigsaw out and start cutting up body panels. Radio, kettle on, music on, and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.